Yo, internet's, internet's busiest, busiest music, music nerd, nerd here, Anthony Fantano. I finally got hair. Uh, but anyway, today we're going to be reviewing uh, the Weezer Blue album, released in 1994, I believe. Now, that is a pop rock album, and I decided to review this because I wanted to get into pop rock, and I thought Weezer was one of the best things. Anthony Fantano gave this a 10 out of 10. I said, why not listen to this album as an introduction to Weezer, as I've also been wanting to listen to Weezer for a while now. Another thing I wanted to talk about before I review the music is actually the album art of Weezer, the Blue Album. It's very simple, minimalistic, as people would say. Uh, ten tracks on the back of the album with a blue uh, color design. It has all four of the members. I think it's very nice. I kind of like that type of simple album art. A lot of album arts try to go like crazy, and I don't really like that. But I think that's pretty okay. Also, before I review the album, I'm also going to give Yoda the Weezer album. So if he drops it, it's his fucking fault. <coughs> now, the first track on the album is My Name is Jonas. I thought it was a pretty good intro track. It's about five minutes long. It does kind of get you in the genre of pop rock, of course, because it is the intro of the album. But it didn't really, like, wow me as I thought maybe it would as the intro track. So that's kind of basically what I have for it. Nothing really else. The next track is uh, No One Else. It spans around two minutes long. It feels kind of more like an interlude instead of its own, you know, full song on the album. But I didn't really feel to listening to the lyrics because, of course, I don't really listen to lyrics when listening to albums, mostly. But when I heard this third track, which is The World Has Turned and Left Me Here, I honestly started listening to the lyrics and even looking it up on Genius, which I did for the rest of the album. Because I feel like that's when it really starts up and picks up. Now, the next one is Buddy Holly. It has about... 100 million streams i think on spotify i thought it was pretty all right maybe not as good as people think it is maybe i need to re-listen for the album maybe on the next couple times that i do it and the next one for the final of the top half of the album is undone the sweater song <sighs> undone the sweater song this shit dude i did not really like this track i'm not gonna lie i mean i thought it was okay it did go well with the top half of the album but it has this weird movie kind of like sample that they did. I guess it goes maybe with the story of that track. I haven't really, you know, looked at the description of the track and what the story is. But overall, as listening to it, it isn't really that good. I don't really like it. So now I want to get to the bottom half of uh, this album. And it starts off with uh, Surf Wax America. Which, after listening to Undone, the sweater song, I thought it was actually amazing. And it's kind of underrated. It only has about... 17 million Spotify streams, I think. Honestly, I kind of feel like it's one of the underrated tracks of this album. And I kind of also feel like the bottom half of the album is kind of underrated. With only people really liking Say It Ain't So, which is the next track which we'll get into. Which is fucking amazing. It has, I think, the top most listened on this album. 200 million streams. Also one of the top five songs out of uh, Weezer's most listened to songs on Spotify. But... It's just fucking great, dude. The guitar solo is amazing with the instruments and the drums. It just all meshes well. I love going into the guitar solo for the first listen. I even listened to this track two times. I thought it was so amazing. Uh, now let's get into the next track, In the Garage. Now the only reason I really like this track is it has a D&D &D reference. He says, I have my master's guide and my 12-sided die. That shit is fucking fire. But I do at the same time feel like the beginning of the track is a little lackluster. Kind of feels a little bit weird. It isn't really like pop rock, which is also kind of happens a lot with this album. There's a lot of pop rock, of course, is the, like the main status of the tracks and the whole album overall. But they also have kind of avant-garde music, which if you guys know what that is, kind of crazy. But yeah, I feel like that's kind of cool. It has the bottom half more kind of, I would say, experimental and different types instead of the overall genre of the album, which is pop rock. Now the uh, next song is Holiday, which I also really like. It also was kind of done together in the garage and Holiday. I read both of their descriptions and it says that we're kind of both made around the same time, which is when they got their uh, album deal, which you can kind of tell. I kind of feel like in the garage, this might be just me, you know, rambling, but In The Garage kind of feels like more before they got their album deal as the guy kind of talks about making music in his garage and playing D&D. &D. And then Holiday feels like he's going on holiday and kind of like very spirited and very like, you know, energetic. And I think this album closes off with Only In Dreams, which is an eight minute track. That shit is eight minutes. 
What the fuck? Eight minute track. I don't really like this track. I feel like, yes, it does go well with the album. With the amount of instrumentals it has. Which is actually half of the track. I believe it's half of the track. Because it kind of fucking felt like half of the track was just instrumentals. The other half is pretty fine. I like it. It has some guitar solos, which I really like. But the instrumental part, I kind of understand it is the outro of the album. So, kind of got to go out with the bang. But at the same time, I feel like four minutes of instrumentals around that time, I don't really feel like it goes with it. But overall, I did kind of enjoy the outro track as it did kind of wow me with all the instrumentals. And overall, the album was pretty amazing and all fit well together. Now it has come to the time to give my review. I do my reviews out of tens. Um, but I'll also do my reviews on what tracks I add into my own personal playlist, which is over 700 songs. 45 hours, by the way. Uh, but yeah, I added every single Weezer song that was on this album. It's about 10 songs, of course, like I said beforehand. Even Undone the Sweater song. Yes, even that. Because I kind of feel like maybe if I listen to it a couple more times, since this was my first listen, you gotta remember that. It is my first listen. But I feel like maybe on retreads of the album, I'll probably like that song maybe a little bit more. Feel like the uh, the samples a little bit better from the movie. I think Fantano gave this a ten out of ten, which maybe I kind of understand because maybe he listened to it multiple different times. For me, it's gonna be a nine out of ten. It's a great album. Came out in nineteen ninety four. I feel like it does kind of come back with the time. <sighs> but undone sweater, man. Undone sweater. What was that? But anyway. Yeah, 2022 uh, has barely started. Hope you guys had a great new year. I had a great one because I actually said, I'm going to upload this year a lot more. I got a bunch of albums right here and a record player. I'm going to be listening to a lot more albums this year. So maybe I'll pull out a couple more reviews for a couple of next weeks. And then maybe we'll see a gaming video once in a while. Also got to thank Yoda. My boy holding down the Weezer album with the Blue Boys. But yeah, this is the end of the video. Fuck you, Anthony Ventano. This was the internet's busiest music nerd. <laughs> Weezer!